Hi, I'm Gareth Green, and in this video, we're going to be thinking about using seventh chords, but not particularly in a traditional way, if you like, but using seventh chords back to back in a way that really enriches your harmony. It's a very useful thing to think about, and we're going to look at it through a few bars, a few measures of quite a famous song actually, just as a demonstration of this. But first of all, let's make sure we're entirely happy about seventh chords. The example we're going to look at in a moment is in the key of A major. So let's just think this in A major. So if you want to get your seventh chords lined up in A major, first thing you need is a scale of A major. Sorry, I'll come back to that note I've just written in a moment. Uh, so if we go up the scale, we don't need the top note because the top note's A and A is the first note. Then if I put a third and a fifth above each of these notes, I've got my basic diatonic chords, diatonic triads. In other words, the chords that sit inside the key of A major. Um, we can number these off like this. Now, I know some people like to use lower case for minor chords and upper case for major chords. That's fine. That's the system we know as uh, extended Roman. This is basic Roman where we just put them all in upper case for simplicity. But if you want to do some differentiation between major and minor, that's fine. But basically, all we're trying to do now is establish the basic triads in the key of A major. So what have we done? Here's the scale of A major. with the three sharps that we need, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And I've just put the third and the fifth above each of those notes. So here's chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord five, chord six, chord seven. And to get those triads, all we've done is used a root note, which is each successive note of the scale. We've added a third and a fifth above each of those notes. Now to turn these into sevenths, all we've got to do is add a seventh on top of the chord, a seventh above each root note. So we've got a root, a third, a fifth, so that's the seventh. A root, a third, a fifth, that's the seventh. A root, a third, a fifth, and that's the seventh. And so we go on. So you get the idea of this. I'm sure this is quite familiar to many people, but I just wanted to make sure everybody's on board with what we mean by seventh chords. And you'll notice as well, when you write an ordinary triad, you get three successive lines or three successive spaces. Three successive lines, three successive spaces. So it goes on. When you add a seventh, it will be another line. So we've now got all these four successive space uh, lines and four successive spaces. So it's a way of checking if you've got something that looks different, you know you've made a mistake. So that's now one seven, two seven, three seven, four seven, five seven, six seven, and seven seven. And then of course this is giving us the basis of our chords. Now, if you've been kind of into finding a few chords for a song or a piece of music you're writing, and you're sort of thinking, well, I'm sort of okay with the chords I've got, but they're not sounding terribly exciting, or you're wanting something a bit richer, a little bit warmer, this is where the sevenths can come in quite usefully. Now, conventionally, this is where I started, conventionally we have certain kind of codes of practice, if you like. So if you're looking at Baroque music or classical music, you probably know a rule that says if you have chord five, seven, well, the seventh normally falls by step when it moves on. The third normally rises by step when it moves on. So when you use a five, seven, you nearly always follow it with a chord one or a chord six, because that facilitates the seventh falling by step and the third rising by step. Sometimes we use a two seven before a chord five or a five seven. So there are those kind of conventions, but I'm just stepping away from that now, maybe moving into a more contemporary scene for a moment, just to open up the possibility of not being too stuck with five seven being the most important of our seventh chords, followed by two seven, 
followed possibly by four seven, and then being a little bit careful about what we're doing with the other seventh chords. That's a kind of conventional wisdom that steered a lot of music for the Baroque and the classical period, certainly. But now when we move into the 20th century and into some slightly different genres, we can kind of free up our use of sevenths and just say, well, what happens if I just put a seventh chord back to back with another seventh chord without really worrying too much about how it functions. So let's just have a think about what I'm talking about here. Say I use a chord one, we'll do it in A major. So without the seventh, just an ordinary chord one. And then I use a chord four. Okay, sounds perfectly right, doesn't it? Going from an A major chord to a D major chord. So that's going from this one to this four. Now, what happens if I use one followed by four, but put them both as sevenths? So one seven, and then four seven. Do you hear the difference? Suddenly it's a much warmer sound, isn't it? It doesn't sound like Bach or Mozart, but that's not, we're not talking about Bach or Mozart here. We're talking about actually in a more contemporary way. How would you do that to make life a bit more colourful, a little bit warmer? So if I go from, say, 1-7 to 4-7 to 3-7 to 6-7. Can you hear how that's kind of quite a warm sound, isn't it? And you can do something kind of fairly punchy with that. And carry on like that. It could be quite a kind of rhythmic, upbeat sort of number. But you could also do that in a much more sedate style, couldn't you? So sort of one seven. Four seven. Uh, maybe a two seven, five seven, back to a one seven. Do you see what I'm doing there? It's kind of like very kind of cocktail piano ish now, isn't it? So all you're doing is using the normal diatonic chords, but adding a seventh on, not worrying about well, how does this seventh chord need to resolve? How does it need to function? You're just thinking, can I put it back to back with another, seven, another seventh chord? And you'll soon get the idea that there are some sevenths that work better than others. You soon get the idea that sort of five seven sometimes wants to resolve to a one, but it doesn't have to. You know, you might have your five seven and it can certainly go, certainly go to a one seven, can't it? You know, so you could do that, you know, something like, it sort of sounds a bit different, doesn't it? But you could do something like this. Go to a six, seven. So five, seven still sometimes has that pull where that wants to rise and that wants to fall to this. But that's okay. You don't have to have every chord as a seventh chord. You could have a, a mixture of ordinary basic diatonic triads turning into chords, or you could use sevenths most of the time if you want to, but not all the time. So there's still some sevenths that work really well. Two tends to function onto five, five tends to function onto one or to six, but you can sit them back to back. And what's really interesting is things like three, seven and six, seven, that you might be less inclined to use in more conventional paths, actually become pretty cool. I think three, seven is a great chord. There's so much you can do with three, seven going to a six, seven. That's a kind of lovely sound, isn't it? Really kind of warm sound. So this is just the idea of putting these seventh chords back to back. Now have a look at this score that we've got on the screen here. It's just literally a couple of bars, a couple of measures of an Earth, Wind and Fire song, September. Probably people know this song, you know. Song, you know, but what's going on here? It's a whole load of this kind of back to back seventh stuff. So, if you have a look at what's going on here, we've got a D major seven chord. Well, that's a four seven, so that's this one here. And, and then we've got a C sharp minor seven, so that's a three seven. Then we've got a B minor seven, so we're onto a two seven. So, you see what's going on here? We're just walking down a scale, aren't we? fourth degree of the scale, third degree, second degree, and we're following that in the bass. Four, seven, three, seven, two, seven. So the bass line maps out our chord pattern. 
all root position seventh chords. Then we go back to a C sharp minor seven or a three seven. Then we have a little leap here and you see we're going to F sharp minor seven or a six seven before we go back to that four seven, that D major seven. So this is the chord pattern. You've got D major seven, four seven, C sharp minor seven, three seven, B minor seven, two seven, C sharp minor seven again, three seven, and then F sharp minor seven, so six seven, and then D major seven, four seven. So you see, it's just this idea of seventh chords back to back. So if I slow it down, this song, that's the melody in the right hand, and then you hear that seventh, 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 seventh. It's kind of making the harmony much richer. So if you had this song without the sevens, it might sound a bit kind of plain, a little bit colourless, but this idea of using seventh chords back to back. So if you're one of the many people who've been in touch with me uh, over the recent couple of years to say, yeah, I've written this song or this piece of music, I've got some chords, they all seem to work, it all sounds all right, just sounds a bit boring really looking for something that's a bit more colourful. Some people have written to me and say, I've tried all this fancy stuff that you've talked about, like secondary dominance, and I've tried using augmented six and Neapolitans, but it doesn't really work in my song, you know. Uh, it sounds a bit out of place. Okay, well, this is kind of in response to all of that. Try just taking your ordinary triads and put sevens on the top of them, and then put the sevens back to back and see what you end up with. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, let me invite you to the Music Matters website, www.mmcourses.co.uk. Lots of material there that should be of great interest to many people. In particular, what about Maestros, our international community of musicians? Have a look on the Maestros link on the homepage and find out more. There are three levels of Maestros. They're nothing to do with ability, all to do with levels of engagement. So anybody, any level is very welcome to join us. Level one comes with fun things like emojis and early access to videos. How about that? Uh, level two, you get the benefits of level one, but level two, extra perks, including access to a monthly live stream where I tend to teach for an hour on topics that have been suggested by members. So is there something you really want to spend an hour on? Well, let me know if you're a level two member and we can deliver that for you. Or you could be a level three member and go the whole hog. You have all the level two and level one benefits. Level three gives you discounts off our courses, uh, other things as well, but also you have an extra live stream, which is much more kind of one-to-one -one tailored, where you can hand in your song, your composition, your harmony exercise, your recording of your uh, yourself performing or your group performing, and I'll give you one-to-one -one feedback. And we'll share that with the group. Live chats running through both of these live streams as well, so you can ask questions, make comments, get to know other people. So it's a fantastic resource, Maestros, and the people who join it just keep telling us how much they value it, and lots of people saying they wish they'd join sooner. So come and join us at Maestros. www.mmcourses.co.uk